I had planned to do a comparison video between three ATI capture devices, this one, this one, and this one. I wanted to play my worst VHS tape on my worst VHS player to see how they fared using each ATI capture device. Then for fun, I decided to see how a mini DV camcorder would handle the VHS tape. The ATI USB 2.0N has the Theater 200 chip, which is one of those older chips that many believe to be superior to ones that came later. As you can see, playing this VHS tape on a regular Sony VHS player without the line TBC feature is not acceptable. The only way to make this work is to add into the workflow a Panasonic ES15 in pass-through mode, which would get rid of this tearing and flagging. Okay, let's test the ATI All-in-Wonder 9600 XT. It seems to be a slight improvement over the other one, still unwatchable without a line TBC, but it's interesting that there are differences in the ability of each capture device to handle my worst VHS tape. Now on to the ATI 600. Oh my, how is it fixing all the tearing and flagging on its own? This is remarkable. I was not expecting to see this. Until this moment, I had assumed that if I played my worst tape on a regular Sony VHS player, I would need to add the ES-15 into the workflow. But the ATI-600 handles it perfectly. And now for the Mini DV player. Well, it too is handling my worst VHS tape. The Mini DV camcorder has a line TBC, and I guess it is effective at fixing very bad VHS tapes from a regular VHS player. After doing the capture device test, I decided to connect the Sony VHS player directly to my Sony CRT television, circa 1986. As you can see, CRT televisions make it all better. Like the VHS player, the TV is an analog device and it is designed to stay in sync with the unsteady signal coming from the VHS player. So to recap, the ATI USB 2.0N was the worst in handling my bad VHS tape. The ATI All-in-Wonder 9600 XT was a bit better. The ATI 600 was the best ATI capture device and the Sony TRV-17 Mini DV camcorder also fixed the visual problems. This sample video probably isn't the best to compare an ATI capture device to the DV method. We'll do that test in another video with proper test footage. But even if the ATI turns out to produce a slightly better looking image, I think that I would have to accept as legitimate the following workflow. A regular VHS player, such as the Sharp brand VCRs of the 1990s, flowing into a mini DV camera, or the Canopus ADVC 110 that Tech TV USA recommends. If this relatively inexpensive workflow can yield very similar visual results and fixes all tearing and flagging issues on bad VHS tapes, then why not use it? I mean, did you really notice a meaningful difference between the ATI 600 method and the Mini DV method? They looked very similar to me. The only real difference was that the Mini DV method fixed all the flagging, while the ATI 600 mostly fixed it all. The one question mark is audio video synchronization. In a future test, I will need to test this VHS to Mini DV workflow to see if it keeps audio and video in sync after an hour of video. Let me conclude by saying that my stress test is only one means of comparison between these capture devices. It might be that the 9600 XT is better overall than the ATI 600. In other words, if one uses an SVHS player with line TBC, then the ATI 600's advantage with bad old tapes won't be important. If you watch to the end, you are very far down the VHS capture rabbit hole. Here are some related videos, hand-selected by me, for you. You can click one of them now.